Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, we're having a conversation about Blood Rage and Innis. Innis. Close, Again. Third time. Close enough. Uh, I'm joined today with Alexander Radcliffe Sender III from Board Game Co. Board Game Co. And Shira. You need like seven last names. Um, I only got one. Kevin. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll add some in we, there sooner or later. I didn't start with these names. He they didn't, were, they until were assigned we, to until me. Until we discovered that he was from North Undershire, you know, we knew nothing. Uh, this is a format that is not technically or typically here on the Quackalope channel. Instead, this is a format... That I do. That you do. Yeah. Called... Play This, Not That. Which is very cryptic. Yeah, it's very cryptic. I've been accused of maligning which games people should and shouldn't play, which I am mm -hmm. fine with. Because in Play This, Not That, what I typically do is I, I compare two games and talk about them and go over them and tell you which one or both you should be playing. But usually I pick a favorite. I might still have both in my collection. And if you've watched any of my top anythings, then you know that both of these are in my collection. And link in the top of this video over to Board Game Co's channel where you can check out more videos of this style, comparing two different games that are similar in some regards and helping you determine which one or both you should bring home. Because he always ends up advocating for both. Or That's neither. not true. Or have, I neither. have I done neither? I don't know if I've actually I don't done, think he's ever I think done I neither. I think I want to do neither. I think I want to do neither. That would be you're very interesting. You can do neither. Oh, I could do neither. And Shira, yes. you are basically part of uh, Sender's family. Basically. As far as the kids are concerned, you are related to some I'm their some daughter, form. apparently. There's yes. some, look, there's some equation that fits in with you being part of the official household. And while I've been here doing a few different pieces of coverage, we also spent an entire Shabbat. 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 Sabbath. Is that accurate yeah, as well? Yeah, okay. all work. Uh, playing a variety of games. These two, uh, new to me, hitting the table for the first time. So in whoa, a way... Whoa, you've played Blood Rage before. Only on TTS. Oh, hitting and the so, table for the first TTS time. TTS doesn't count for anything. Exactly. TTS doesn't count. And so, in a way, this is also a played at once for me. That being said, I'm going to back off a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and give a overview of what these games are. Sure. Because uh, we're not doing a bunch of B-roll. We're not going to be showing you everything. We're assuming you're loosely familiar, but we'll get your feet wet and then talk about the mechanics, talk about the accessibility, the player count, the things that we like, didn't like, and why one of these games might be the right game for you to play. Yep. Uh, both of these had been highly recommended to me, and I'd avoided playing them for way too long. That's, that's definitely Well, true. at least one of them. One of them. The other one... I probably could have waited a little longer. Oh, <laughs> dark. Okay, so so starting off the bat, I'll you. tackle Inish first. And Inish is going to be, both these are games that are clearly in my collection. Both these games that I very much love. And if you've watched my content, you already know which one I prefer. But the interesting thing is, we have other people here, which means we get a variety of different opinions and reasons as to why and stuff. So, Inish. Inish is going to be a drafting area control game where you ultimately win the game through either one of three different victory conditions. Either you have presence in six different territories, you are chieftain over six different units, or you have a presence with six That's different right. sanctuaries. Multiple sanctuaries can be in one territory. Every round is going to proceed with you drafting until you have four different action cards, and those action cards are going to drive the game. You do not have actions in this game where you're like, I spend an action point to do this. You do what the card says, and you do only what the card says. There are 17 cards. Of those 17 cards, six 16 will be drafted around amongst the four players if you are playing a four-player game. From there, you'll play your cards one at a time or pass, playing this little little game of chicken, seeing who will pass out, who will pass first, whether you'll lose the entire round and move to the next round. And you do that until someone basically gets those victory conditions, claims Bren, at which point you try to see if you can stop them or, or, or not. Along the way, there's other things like the Epic Tale cards, the Advantage cards, all these things that basically drive home the, the things around the game, but at its core, it is a drafting area control game, roughly 90 to 120 minutes or so, it depends on who you're playing with, player count, and all that, and that would be in a, sh in a nutshell. And like I said, I just played Blood Rage for the first time, so let me do my best to let you know what it is as well. I will well. happily correct you. It is also a territory control game. It is. Uh, where you're going to be spreading various forces out onto the board from a variety of different clansmen and shaman and other hero characters to giant beasts and creatures that join your ranks and you can control by snapping bases on. The core conceit of this game is going to be a combination of drafting a series of initial cards through different stages of the game, one, two, and three different rounds, yep. uh, adding those into your hand and then playing them, either building out your tableau, upgrading your mercenaries and what they're able to actually accomplish, getting some clan special abilities that give you more manipulation and control, and, of course, getting things locked in that score you endgame victory points. Now, those victory points can come from a variety of sources. It could be territory control, which is the main conceit. It could be being smashed by a meteorite, smashing down onto Ragnarok. the earth, sacrificing 
sacrificing yourself to the gods because everyone knows that you score a lot of victory points when you do that. Uh, yeah. It could also just be the way that you sequence and build your tableau so that if you've controlled certain regions for the longest period of time or have a dominated amount of force, uh, you'll be able to cycle and score more. Along with that, one of the most interesting or compelling parts of this game is going to be the combination of territory control with a victory point strategy that legitimately means you've slaughtered everyone on your team. Yeah. Uh, the Loki strategy. Anything, anything we missed on either of these? I don't think so. I think you... Hit them on the head. Yeah, okay. those are both going to be high-level overviews of the game. And so from there... Let's justify why they're worth comparing, though. They're worth comparing for a variety of reasons. Yep. To begin with, they both, both of have... them are based off Vikings. Both of They are? Inish is more of a Celtic, technically Viking-adjacent. I mean, they're pretty darn Viking close. Adjacent. They're pretty darn close. Yes, both they're... of them come in boxes. Are we going that route? They're both drafting. They're both drafting. There we go. There we go. Solid That's point. They're both area okay. control. Area okay. control. We've got a second one. Excellent. They're both pretty. But that, they're, that, they both, they're they both, both pretty. are pretty. Yep. That's true. Okay. I think I think anything else. They both have combat. Fair they both combat have combat is going to have a focus to a degree. Mm -hmm. They both give you opportunities to feel clever. Yeah. Anything else we want to powers abilities a little bit uh, not so much. Not I as mean, much in them. Blood Rage has some. Blood Rage has many. They're Inish both basically so. the same game. It's just one slightly worse than the other. Yes, yeah, that's basically it. 100%. That's the, I think the video should end there. I, yeah. There we are. And with, so that, with that, if you want to swing over to Board Game Co. and check out this format with other titles, that's wait, wait, about... We didn't, we didn't say which one was worse than the other. Oh, we should get into that. Oh, that's part of the conversation. So mm. so with that, we're going to cover the game for a variety of, of core things. And it's really just meant to be a framework for, for the general conversation. But to start with, let's start with art and theme. Art, theme, miniatures, all that. In terms of which one, what do you... What, should, you should brought, you brought up that they were both pretty. They're yes. both pretty. What way are they both pretty? This one, so Inish has a lot of pretty backgrounds mm -hmm. on the locations. They're all very colorful. Um, they're like pictures taken, like artistic pictures. So I really like the artwork in Inish. The players are really boring, though. They are pretty um, true. You have not managed to paint them yet. I, don't I have know not if that even was... attempted to paint them. I'm only halfway through Blood Rage. Inish is not happening right. quite yet. And so Blood Rage, the miniatures that are pint print, um, painted are really pretty. They even have like fake grass on them. Yeah. Um, that doesn't come in the box. That's hard work and, and effort right. and attention and all that stuff. Um, I like how that ha um, Blood Rage has four different like clans yep. that mm. the miniatures all look different. Yes. Whereas Inish, all the miniatures look pretty much the same, just different colors. Sure. Yeah. So so I would agree in all counts so far. Uh, well, in most counts, because I would say for me, the artwork in Inish never really truly pulled me in. What about it the cards? Is, the car what about the cards? the cards? Are you kidding me? No. I don't like the cards. Not for are me. you kidding me? Not for me. They're the best part no, of this no, entire the, game. No, these are so pretty. Those are photos. Yeah, I, I really like luck photos. That's not a photo. I mean, no, it's like, but it, it, it's, it's, it's photo, a, it's a, it's a, it's a watercolor. I, I believe, I, I believe that is a photo that has been turned into a painting, not actually painted. I'm cool with that. I believe it is a painterly adaptation. This is where... I nope. mean, the detail, Absolutely the not. art, the style of nope. these cards. It's way too Definitely not. They're no. so detailed and intricate. So they are detailed and it's intricate. Okay they just wrong. don't appeal to me. So oh the gosh. artwork in Inish to me always was a very specific style. I'm not I even going to acknowledge that you said that. I think it yeah. is going to it's be very, out. very good for a lot of people, including uh, people like yourself. But for me, the artwork was never the draw for me in Inish, nor were the miniatures. While nicer than many games, uh, they're they're okay compared to games with tons of amazing miniatures like Command will bring to the table or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, for me, practically speaking, when it comes to aesthetic of the game, when it comes to the art, the miniatures, the production quality, Inish basically loses on nearly all counts. I say nearly because the one thing that I do like about Inish that's very unique and pulls me in is the way those tiles fit together, which is... It's ultimately just a sure. hex-based yeah. system. It's not anything special or magical, but it manages to work and feel interlocking and feel unique, and it does bring something special to the table that way. But for me, uh, Blood Rage is going to win on all other categories of, of art and the like. It's interesting, because I, I really, really like these cards. Yeah. I think I spent most of the game looking at the beautiful artwork. That explains how well you did. Yes. Uh, I don't even pay attention to the cards, honestly. Oh, but the, the artwork is so... It, it has so I mean, much detail it, and are, style. Some of, them are nice. some of them are beautiful. And I do actually really like the artwork in Blood Rage as well, even from these core little abstracted uh, uh, silhouettes and shadowy figures. They still yep. give you a visage of what it is, right? Of yep. what is uh, happening on the scene. And they are all custom and unique and scripted based off of who you're recruiting and what they are. 
I totally agree. The miniatures are better over here. I even think the board presence is better over yes. here. Uh, so Blood Rage has it for me when it comes to art. What about theme? Do either of you even pay it? No, neither of nope. you care about theme. No. Nope. <laughs> so am I the only vote that matters when it comes to theme? I guess so, by default. This feels like you're going to a rock concert. This one over... <laughs> Story doesn't matter. This one here feels like you're going to a rock concert. This one here feels like you're listening to a solo celloist. Okay. Yeah, as far as theme goes. that's. I mean, this has smashing meteorites and, you know, uh, incredible uh, moments of giant creatures destroying everything in their grasp. This has slow, uh, you know, thoughtful... theme or general feeling no, no, of the game? But but it is... I, I don't know the theme of this. Well, clearly, you called it a Viking like this game. this is more like fol folksy and like... Sure. Like a, a guitar on the countryside. That, I would agree, is like a rock yeah. concert... But I'd go with I'd go with guitar on the countryside. It's like more folksy, like everyone dancing around in a circle, barefoot. I know None how to, I know how to solve means this. Anything to me. At the head of your ship, you oh, eagerly Lord. search for any sign of land. Here's why I didn't know the theme. We didn't even read the theme before starting to play. As you peer through the dissipating mist, it finally gives way to the silhouette of cliffs. You have arrived at your new home. Now your clans can partake in a new era of prosperity. Rival chieftains also set sail for the same land, and soon the time will come to hold the great council and elect the High King of Innes. Or Queen. Will you be the one who ascends to the throne? They use King for both. Ragnarok has come. The end <laughs> of the world is upon us. But we are Vikings. This is no time for despair. It is time for glory. Death is nothing to fear. For the glory of battle will earn you an eternal place in Valhalla at Odin's side. Yeah, I guess that's more rock concert. Right, yeah. That also has a lot more Greek mythology. Um, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it does. You, uh, no, it's, it's like Viking, Norse, mytho uh, Norse mythology. It's, not it's Greek? the Vikings. Yeah, the Odin, Zeus, all that. Oh, wait. Zeus? Oh, Zeus is, is Greek. Zeus? Yeah. Zeus is definitely Greek. Yeah, you're Hera, right. You're right. Poseidon. No, you're right. Any so of it's those sort of. Poseidon's not in there. I don't think so. Is it? Zeus? Zeus is not I in believe there. It's Odin. It's Odin and Loki. Yeah, it's Odin it is, Loki. It is it's Viking mythology. Yeah, it's Viking mythology. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's going to be uh, the, the art, aesthetics, the miniatures, and apparently theme. A cello or a solo guitarist, as opposed to a rock concert. Yeah. That's all you should use to decide games on? Basically. That feeling's very accurate. Am I wrong? So, from there, moving on to uh, something else, is going to what be else? accessibility Tell in us, terms Alex. of player count and time spent. Okay. I didn't learn either of these games. How accessible okay. are they to learn? Oh, learn. Let's cover that. I should, I should add that. Player count in terms of teaching, accessibility, and time spent. So, uh, for myself, I guess I'll cover the teaching one first because I, I teach games. You teach very I slow, though. I personally find... That Inish is an easier game to teach with one or two things that are a little bit less intuitive than I would like. So overall, I would say I can get Inish up and running and teach people much faster than Blood Rage. Okay. There's a few small points I have to tweak on and work on. Blood Rage is not hard to teach by any shot, don't get me wrong. But it's certainly, the, there's just enough extra stuff going on and more warnings about the cards in each round, how that's going to play out. And more sequences of the boards. There's more unique pathways, individual cards, and every round sequences. Yep. Whereas, so you need to know what's coming in a way. Whereas here, the same cards that you're drafting every turn, every round, are going to be the same cards that you're drafting. There is yep. a depth to knowledge and strategy, and the more you play, certainly scales. But the way you taught me was genuinely sat down and ran me through all 16 or 17 cards, and then we were sort of ready to operate. Everything you need to know. Yeah. And yeah, so in this... Repeat. Yeah, rinse, repeat. Yeah, so this is going to be easier to teach as far as I'm concerned. Uh, easier that to learn. That less... Pieces to get to the table. Like, I know you're yes. talking about getting to the oh, table. Setup. That setup. Setup's a good point. That yeah. takes a lot more time to set up. This, if we're looking for a quicker setup. Yeah, you're not wrong. Inish takes about two minutes to get out of the box, up and running, and Blood Rage is, is a bit more than that. Not terribly long, but more than that. How many times have you played these? Because I've only played once. There were. This one Blood was definitely in three. my top ten. You played Blood Rage exactly three times. I know that. Yes. Inish, I don't know exactly, but probably somewhere four. seven or okay. eight. You think oh. it's only four? More than four. What's been your experience yeah. with like player counts and, and getting these both to the table in terms of accessibility? What's been your experience with both games? Where do you prefer them? We only play them with four. Okay. Yes, but. There is a but. <laughs> We've only ever played them with four. Do you want to play them with other levels? Alex says this one is bad. With that, uh, less. No, no, no. So so, so my own personal experience, and I keep in mind I have not played Inish with 2, I have not played Brothers with 2, I have played Brothers with 5, and Inish I have not played with 5. So basically, I played this with uh, 3 and 4, and that with 3 and 4. So that what you're saying faster. is Alex's own prejudice no, no, is no, scripting so, your experience with these games. 
Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. for sure. Yes. So my own personal experience with them in terms of player count is going to be that Blood Rage at five gets cluttered, but does not really work at three, mm. and really you need four players for Blood Rage. That's my experience, four as a flat number. Would I be willing to play with other player counts? Yes, but reluctantly so. Inish, on the other hand, for myself, does not I mean I had the, fifth, the expansion has a fifth player expansion. We haven't really added that, so I can't speak for that. Uh, with three and four, it is a great three player game. It's just so much better as a four player game. When you frame that's it like that, that's not what she said. It that's does not, what not said. No, make it seem it, worthwhile playing three players. You're right. And that's how I feel. That is how I feel. But the difference is, Inish, I will pull out a three, just reluctantly so. Blood Rage, I do not pull out a three anymore. Hmm. In the entire time I have. I'm not played th games with you, you have never pulled this out. You're as a not wrong. Player. You're not wrong. But the entire time I have played games is longer than the entire time I amount of time I have played games with yourself. So That's true. in in this context, they are basically a tie for myself. And I don't play games. But Apparently. it's a tie with Inish slightly winning out in terms of that. I will play Inish at three and four. I prefer four. Blood Rage I really only play at four. Any other notes on accessibility when it comes to getting these games uh, to the play table? Playtime. Playtime. Mm. Another mid factor as well. I don't know how long they're supposed to play. I know this one felt longer. Oh, and we that, are starting to dive into opinions here. So that was not long whatsoever. That was one of the shortest for... Inish games we oh have played. Oh my goodness, we have played this for one game for yeah. four hours. Wow. Well, no, that's what? that's an exception. That's an exception. Can I just say my first experience? Then what a relief. Oh my dear lord. So, <laughs> so Blood Rage is going to come in at, I would say, on the low end, you're looking at a two-hour game. On the high end, it, it crosses to three, very rarely past that, but it's somewhere in the two-hour to three-hour range. Uh, Inish, for ourselves, we have had the occasional longer game, although the expansion does add a mechanism to ensure it doesn't keep going on forever. We haven't really used that because, honestly, we tend to enjoy Inish, and we don't mind when it creeps a little longer. But in general, I would say Inish is probably coming in at the... 60 to uh, two and a half hour playtime, so it's a little bit on the lower of a spread, whereas Blood is coming in at two to three hours. So they will have overlap, but I do find Inish to be a shorter experience. I think the long game I'm remembering was when we played two back to back games. Mm, was the it? first one, someone got slaughtered really, that could be. really quickly, and, the, and then we just turned around and reset. But that's a good metric because I have played Inish back to back, I have played three games of Inish in a row, yeah. I have never played two games of Blood Rage in a row. Yeah, that I can't play back to back. Yeah. This I can go back to back to back. Yeah, and that's going to be an accessibility. So I think for myself at least, uh, I don't know about the two of you because you barely know games apparently, but for myself, uh, Inish is going to win across all boards of accessibility in terms of setup times, in terms of teaching, in terms of length, in terms of the player count. Inish is going to win on all counts. Yeah, and from there, from there we go to mechanics. Mechanics. And this is going to be the things largest we like, general didn't category. Like, the yeah. things that stand out the most between what might make this right or wrong for yes. different players. Okay, uh, let's start. Let's start in the very, very initial comparison. The reason why both these games are drafting. probably drafting would be that that start conversation. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on the you weight of this? I know you have. You opinion want me here. to? Yeah, I do I have an opinion, opinion here. Uh, what is your I opinion find on drafting. Oh no, it's not no, no, opinion no. on drafting. It's opinion on these drafting. Oh. I don't. I don't really love territory control games. So I'll put that caveat out there. The territory control games that I have enjoyed usually utilize some other mechanic that I find that is the puzzle I like the most, mm -hmm. as opposed to territory control solely. For Blood Rage, that is going to be the drafting. The unique cards, the chaining of abilities, the building your tableau, the weight that every single hand has when you you genuinely need or want three or four cards that you have to pass on, this is probably, this is a better drafting experience than Terraforming Mars was. You, uh, yeah, no, I agree with that. You're bringing and I, Terraforming I that. No, no, Mars. I am, I am. And Can I, we just throw in the title Blood Rage? Listen, versus Terraforming Mars listen. versus Inish. And I, and I liked Terraforming Mars because of the drafting. Okay. This drafting is, it might be the best drafting I've ever played. I don't disagree with you. This is the best drafting I've ever played, bar none. That is not really? a face that agrees really? with me. What do you prefer? Ter terraforming Mars? Terraforming Mars does. The groaning sounds that we make when we get those you, cards and not want to pass it. Rage. Not as much. So, there's, so, there's much more unique cards with okay. Terraforming Mars. The follow-up to this, uh, Blood Rage versus Terraforming Mars, will be hosted on my channel, apparently. <laughs> yes. There's a lot more unique cards in Terraforming Mars. This, Blood Rage has a lot more of the same types of cards okay. that can get a little bit repetitive. I don't disagree with you there. That would be an excellent point to make in that video. Oh. In the terms of Inish... He brought up in the Terraforming Mars. And he Whoa. shouldn't have. Whoa, and this is recorded. Have. Let me rewind and see who actually brought that up. Because I... In terms of Inish versus Blood Rage, which drafting do you prefer and why? Blood Rage. Definitely. Why? Um, because of the sounds we make. The it sounds is definitely, we make. definitely a higher, more interesting, I really don't want to pass this to you, but I have to 
So what am I going to hate draft you? Yeah. That gets involved a lot more with Blood Rage than it does with Innis. And I think for me, the reason for that, the reason for those noises, the reason for that hate drafting is going to be because an in Innish as tense as the drafting can be, as important as it can be for your round to round choices, ultimately you'll see those cards next round. It's never going to be a case of, well, I guess I'm never going to see that Geist card yeah. for the rest of the game. In Blood Rage, it is. Every time you pass your hand with those cards that you need for your strategy, there's a possible chance you'll see it back because it comes back once, but then after that, it's over. Here's it's the thing, with. though. If you are more focused on the territory control mechanic, which is the other thing we should talk about, yep. the drafting here is more responsible. It gives you more control over your strategy. You're it's confident. More consistent. You're confident, uh, you know, with how things might change. You can predict what other players might have to utilize at certain moments. This is much more chaotic and unpredictable. Uh, whereas I like the way they've twisted this and the approach they've taken, where as you're drafting cards, if I already have two cards in my hand, I could cycle yeah. and and yeah. refresh the draw pile. It gives me so much more precision and control over cards that are less exciting. They're yeah. not as fun, but they're not also probably the core feature. They're not, you know, they sort of take a, a back step to the on the table yeah. experience. Yeah, that's agree. In terms of winning, in terms of points, we talked about this briefly at the beginning. Inish is ultimately going to be winning with one of three different objectives that you strive for versus Blood Rage. It just comes down to glory. Point salad. Yeah, it's glory, and the way you get glory is going to be a variety of different systems and Everything. things you can do. Can I go back to one more thing on the draft? Jump? Absolutely. So with. Inish, sometimes I'll find that I'll purposely pass along a certain card to give someone else the responsibility of taking well. out the winner. Yes. So if I don't want to have to engage in a fight or do a battle, I'll purposely pass along the battle cards knowing that that next person has them and will have that responsibility of mm, taking out the winner. Yeah, that's true. And that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of the winning, so winning, so points, glory versus objectives. Which do you prefer and why? Objectives. Why? I don't know. We'll come back to you in a minute. Jesse, which do you prefer <laughs> yes, and why? please. Points, glory, or objective? Hands down, glory. Yeah, why? Uh, because, well, come back to me in a minute. Okay, cool. So, for myself, glory versus objectives. Uh, ultimately, I, I, I have a tie on this one. Do you I don't come back in a minute? No, we'll come back to both of you in a minute. I'm good. Uh, for me, it's a tie. It's not that I like one versus yeah. one, one better than the other. They both bring something different to the table. Inish locks you into one of three core options that really drives home the fact that you know I have to do this to win. It's very clear, it's very streamlined, and the amount of cleverness it gives you while trying to achieve those objectives is varied. It gives you a lot of options around it. On the other hand, I do also like the aspect of Blood Rage where it's not that I win by being in six territories, it's that I win by having the most points. And here's 15 different ways I get points yes. and they are all fun. That's so the core for element for me. When it comes to points over objectives, Points means I can break the game or twist it or mm -hmm. experiment with what is going to end up and result in a pile of points. Points are fun. It's like hitting it's like hitting the jackpot and having coins just slot out of the end of it when it gets to the end. It's that point salad celebration, like throwing stuff into the air. And I'm wrong because yes, And that's exactly why I don't like points. <laughs> because someone can be hiding and like sneak out from behind and then all of a sudden be winning the game even if sure. other people were doing much better on the board. Are you hypothetically referring to our last game where the person in last place came this close to winning because he played Odin's Throne with four quests Possibly. and destroyed? Possibly. I don't like that mechanic. I like clear. I like concise. I like black and white. You either win, you lose. Mm. You don't have to worry about something hiding and coming out to surprise you. So this is going to be a tie. Uh, they each choose one versus the other and I just said both. I took the coward's way out. So that is going to be the the winning of the game. Any other? Yeah, there's. I mean, there's definitely some other mechanics more, we want to plenty, talk about. Yeah. Let's talk about territory control because that's the other thing yes. outside of drafting that is a core comparison here. Uh, in this, it's going to be a circular board with one uh, one central, central region, region and everyone is going to be positioned first around the outside, moving in towards the center. There's going to be a few things to pay attention to. Uh, there, in each region, you're going to be able to score uh, special uh, character or player board stat boosts or clan yep. boosts, uh, potentially victory points, and if you win or control a region, there is a chance that you'll have cards that allow you to score based off of where you remain. Yes. Uh, also, when you engage in a battle, uh, you, can have, you can call to arms anyone around uh, the table. And as long as there's space for them to exist there. And so even if you're in so, one yeah. central, you know, if you're in one position, that doesn't mean you can't be involved in as many battles as you want to be. Uh, Innis. Innish. No space limiting rules. Whatsoever. 
That's what one reason I don't like Flood Rage. Oh, you don't like the space yes, limiters? Yes, because there's like there's only five circles, and you're like, I have a massive monster, and I want to come in, and all the spaces are taken. I can't demolish the war. The gods have told you no. So for me, I think I think the clear sign for me on this one is going to be my least favorite spot in Blood Rage is Yggdrasil. It is that spot where oh, anyone can go I in. I love it. I am like I love the control of I don't care how big your monster is. I got here first, and there's not enough room. Go see someone else's party. I love that feeling of being able to defeat someone who has these two creatures, and it doesn't actually matter because you control the board. The other intriguing thing is, though... So size doesn't matter in the end? Whereas, <laughs> whereas winning some of these locations will give you clan boosts and stat boosts, over here, controlling and dominating regions will result in special player powers and cards that you get to utilize because you own that province. Yeah. Uh, this dramatically, in my opinion, improves upon territory control as opposed to Blood Rage. I like these special powers. I like the fact that where I am strategically placed, uh, I get a direct reward due to that. I would agree with that. Um, yeah. like, so when and it comes you can make to... make or break the battle also. Like Iron Mind Absolutely. really changes Iron the battle. Iron Mind, whoa. <laughs> Definitely changes the battle. There's another one, another mine. Which... There, there's the Cove, not the Cove. There are some more. There's the Hills. There's different ones that have combat abilities. I know the Iron Mine is usually the one that we most like right. resent in battle, but there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. For sure. I, I would put my vote for a territory control game on Inish. Blood I, rage. however, really, Blood see, rage. because I, for however, me, me. This is I, however, opinion. don't like territory control. Right. Uh, interesting. Okay. And yourself? Um, both. Both. The tower. The coward's <laughs> way out. The other time. Yes. Any other core mechanics we want to talk about? So, so there's, I have a few of them general notes. I don't know if they're really compare and contrast, but I would say, let's take this one. The way both games handle defeat. Hmm. How how does losing or not not this losing the one, game but losing individual battles being able to mm -hmm. take a hit? This one crushes your spirit. Mm -hmm. This one uh, makes you feel dumb. So I actually don't disagree with that, but that was less my overall point. Uh, I'm referring yeah, that more wasn't to my the, point either. That point? one at least you get something back when you die in terms of loading. like no like at the end at the end of the round you get your yeah. you get points back. This, when you die, you have to restart all over. So for myself, I tend to feel that, and, and Blood Rage does have the Loki strategy, which is going to change the conversation depending on how heavily you go in a strategy that literally relies on defeat. But for myself, I, I again, I would give this a bit of a tie to them in the sense that I find both in Inish and in Blood Rage, you can ha be fairly decently stomped on and still be doing well. That Inish has this aspect of when you completely die, your characters pop up in a new place, and it can be devastating where and how they pop up in a game that usually tries to deny you the freedom to move how and where you want. And in Blood Rage, is obviously going to be that locust strategy we talked about as well, that different cards are going to give you different rewards for well, the death that happens. Four nine. But I find that, in general, you can be very heavily stomped on in both these games and still feel in it, in general. I wouldn't disagree with that. Uh, I still would go back to, you know... My, my other thing, or yeah. this can crush you. You know, you this you can feel like you should have won a battle and be completely blown out of the water. Sure. Uh, and still make it. And this one, if you if you lose a battle strategically, you just feel like you've been outplayed. And speaking of which, that's a good way to cover combat mechanics. Hmm. In terms of the way these games handle combat, how do you feel about it and why? Uh, this is going to be straight-up power combined with card play. Yeah. This is going to be straight-up power... Uh, combined with card play, but instead of one big resolution, this is going to give you a sequence. You can choose again and again to slap the other person, retreat, uh, move into a city so no one can touch at least one of your characters, and being or existing in a space is sometimes more valuable than having control of it if, yeah. if yes. you're pushing towards endgame. So this one will wipe everyone out except one person, typically, mm -hmm. uh, and is more focused on one big moment. And which do you prefer and why? Myself, personally? Yeah. Uh, well, that one. Blood Rage. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just like one big winner. Yeah, it's just, it's just so fun. This one's going to be, uh, for myself, the answer's a little bit twisted on this one, which is, I would say, in general... Are you going to take prefer, the middle road again? No, 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 no. In general, I prefer the combat in Inish. I would say, in general, I like the, the back and the forth and the streamlined nature of trying to figure out how to min-max your way towards a victory. But I do very much like the... The moment in Blood Rage where you play a card or where you, where you augment that card with one of those plus twos, plus threes, and ma max the battle. I would say I have much greater highs and lows in Blood Rage, sure. but the overall middle of the ground will be more consistently liked in Inish. Yeah, I definitely agree with the highs and lows. 
Um, I like the fact that you, if you're in a territory with two other people, you can kind of gang up on the third yep. person, offer peace. Um, well, that's interesting because both of them allow for three-way battles, but this one, it's winner take all. Right. Mm. This that one, one's, two it's alliances. Can, two can survive. And be... That's a good point. I like that. You're right. That's yeah. another point in Nisha's favor. Yeah. Much yeah. more strategic. Yeah. Anything else we want to cover before we move to final thoughts? When it comes to mechanics? Yeah. What we like, don't like, can compare between the two. Monsters? Monsters, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, monsters. And it's interesting, because I was going to say something else, but it's the same idea, which I was going to say the player board leveling up. Because that's going to be two aspects. Both the monsters and the leveling up of your no, clan no, 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 are both creature. going to be yes. things or, or parts that are present in Blood Rage that are experiences that don't really have a fair comparison in Inish. I would say the closest comparison is likely going to be those epic tail cards. That's going to be where you have an opportunity to develop your unique advantage, although more of a temporary nature than a permanent clan boost. Isn't so, there an expansion? For there is an expansion, that we haven't but, played with? No, we played with our parts of it, and there's still no clan it's powers. It's nothing that, like, you have a different piece that no, has different powers? Okay. No, not that, none of that. So, so like, ultimately, there's the mystics in... Yeah, they have that. So the Blood Rage is going to have both the Gods expansion and the mystics expansion that augment the experience. Uh, Inish does have an expansion that gives you some harbors. It gives you that aspect I mentioned briefly about how it controls for a game that runs on for too long. Okay. It's going to give you the seasons of Inish. But these are all small little modules. The biggest oh, one yeah, is really going to be... Seasons we... The seasons we didn't love. Yeah. yeah, it added more clutter to the game without improving the experience but so in terms of i guess in terms of comparing epic tale cards and the powers and abilities those give versus the powers and abilities the clan board and the monsters that you get from blood rage what do you prefer and why definitely blood rage i like powers and abilities I think yes very you much are so. very well known for your powers and abilities yes. liking um I oh, take not only his liking of them also his own personal powers and abilities. my powers <laughs> and abilities are are fairly fairly um i i talk they're talked about yeah i talk they're they, talked they, about. they are talking mm. <laughs> Um, I like how each individual monster can do something different that can make or break your round and yeah. even the game. Um, I personally like the sea creature who I sit in between two areas. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> You've taken the sea creature in all three of your games. Yes. 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 Okay, I so like, you like the sea creature. She sits in the middle between two areas and can participate in both battles. Oh, and there was a moment. It. So there was a moment. This is a fun one. This is the first time we actually had this happen where we had one of the gods. I can't remember the name of which one it was, but the one that prevents death from happening in her region. Mm -hmm. And then you had a battle taking place yes. in the sea fjord between different regions. So your sea monster was indestructible in even though you weren't battles. in her zone. Yeah. Yes. It was, yeah, yes, cool. that was, that was awesome. Yeah. I, li I like my sea creature. Now, just imagine for the sake of imagination i like it i want a, a monsters of blood rage expansion for inish i approve yes and there are islands so there, there are, are islands. sea there yeah. can be sea creatures there can be land creatures this one likes to swing there are 14 axe. people in the comments down below who love this idea and there's like three who are mortally offended by what just happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and so that's that so you prefer the blood rage system and i don't think i disagree i love the epic tale cards and this i love the holding on to them till that key moment that impactful mm. moment in the game you, where you're you going to hold unleash. on to them i do like, i like it between mm -hmm. seven because, and 14 because when you want to bam, drive bam, home for bam. the win everyone's trying to stop you and being able to have your your edge is so important but that is exactly why I prefer it in Blood Rage. I prefer the consistent ability uh, to level up, the consistent ability to bring something home as opposed to an Inish the way I use them. It's all the end game. Sure. And so it's fun, Sure. but it's just localized to, to the two or three moments in the game where I think it's time to try to push for a victory. Want Overall, talk about deeds? Oh, yeah. Deeds? Deeds? Yeah. No, I was just going to wrap. That can make your win condition easier to obtain. Mm. Yeah. Kind of Go doing a kindness for someone else. Like if you give them an epic tail card that you use, mm. then you get a deed. Then instead of needing... Well, to be fair, there's two ways you get deeds. <laughs> the first is by doing kind deeds to other people. The second is by slaughtering people in battle. So if you thought there was a moral lesson here, it's not quite so clear. It's let's slaughter someone in battle. Here are flowers. I get two deeds now. <laughs> exactly. But they can also make or break like, and change the dynamics. If you know someone has four, two deeds, they only need to have four out yeah. of six to yeah, get victory their... conditions yes. lowered. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things that also helps keep Innis at a shorter play time because you're slowly adding Ds to the game that will make that victory easier. I don't know if there's a fair comparison back and forth in Blood Rage, but I, I, I do like the Ds in Innis. Yes, yeah. I know. So, I find the mechanics of Blood Rage result in more explosive, fun moments. Absolutely. Consistently across the board. Absolutely. Whereas the mechanics here are catered to uh, a near-perfect information, heavily strategic puzzle that you're solving yeah both of those which i like i mean there's a reason yeah. these are my one and three top favorite games respectively which i guess brings us to final thoughts 
Which my, is, I mean, it's also interesting that yeah. these are your one they and are three my one and top three. favorite And what's people my number two? On the, what? Oh, no, oh, is that oh, not? Oh, oh, the game there. that you weren't <laughs> supposed to mention. It's Terraforming Mars is my number two. So there's consistency in my liking of drafting. But for myself, I I pick Blood Rage. I love Inish. I have debated multiple times whether Inish is my favorite. But at the end of the day, all the things I do love about Inish do not make up for the high moments I get in Blood Rage. Those high moments of comboing certain powers, of dropping a monster down, of having an epic battle, of realizing all the things that are about to happen and how you are part of that, or even just died along the way. They're all fun moments, mm -hmm. and I love both of these games, but for me, Blood Rage is the winner in this in this discussion. What do you think? Is it going to me? It's going to you. It's going, to, going you. to me next? Then we're, I mean, we're going to be weighted. We're gonna, I, I kind of wanted the final <laughs> vote. You want the final vote? Get it no, 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 I got it, I got we it. We know what you I got it. I, I know, I, I, I haven't been hiding throughout the entirety of this. Blood Rage is the right game for me. Yeah. I think they're both really, really great. And I understand why people really like Inish. Uh, but for me, this is just fun. It's just, it's chaotic, it's super powered, it's over the top. And from the very first play on TTS, uh, I knew I knew I loved it. Um, I am going to have a full copy of this one yeah uh i would play this again it wasn't that it was a bad game it was that i think part of i think part of the game is it was my very first experience with it and understanding the puzzle and the chain and how the dynamics work i really didn't quite get the mechanics and i was playing sure. against people who had played together many times mm -hmm. and so you all knew the dynamics of the table a lot better than i did i would look forward to playing again but i'm not seeking out uh, i'm not seeking out anish uh it wasn't it wasn't compelling enough to convince me that it's one that I want to teach to another group of people and convince them to play with me. Whereas yeah. Blood Rage, I'd love to teach it to more people. I mean, I think every game group that I have should have an experience with that title. Yeah. Every time each one comes out, each one becomes my favorite. Um, <laughs> when we play Blood Rage, it's Blood Rage is the best. When we play Inish, it's Inish is the best. But when they're both sitting on the table uh -huh. together, uh -huh. Blood Rage is going Whoa. to take it. Oh my gosh. So this is one we weren't sure about. This is the genuine, we were not sure about this one at all because we, like you said, we've had this discussion. I, I yes. thought she might, I, I thought she might yeah. play so, counterweight. So, so, and I don't disagree with you. What I have done every single time I play Inish, I sit there and I say, you know what, this, this might be my number one. I've never crossed that threshold, but that's when I say it. I'm like, I coming off the high of the game, I'm like this actually might beat up Blood Rage, but it never actually does. And when I play Blood Rage, I'm like, this is my number one game. There's a degree of certainty when every single time I experience this game. So that's a, a three-way agreement on this one, apparently. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So play this, not that. Isn't that this how that works? This is definitely staying. It is, is not going wait, anywhere. Wait, no, that's the whole... The whole yeah, do not play the Inish. The whole title. And this is a horrific game. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. not worth really being on your shelf. Honestly, we could just get rid of it right now. There's I'll no take it. Real I'll, I'll take just it mail me yeah. all your copies. I'll, take, yeah, I'll just totally collect fine. them. And fun fact, and I don't know which yeah. of the two of you... I know you. I don't know which one of the two of you know this at all, but Blood Rage is having more content coming. Eric Lang has, has hinted at the possibility of Ooh. other stuff coming that may be standalone-ish or maybe sequel-ish. It's a little unclear, yeah. but it's Blood Rage, and I'm paying attention i Aren't these I'm, part of a series? So there is a spiritual series of Blood Rage, Rising Sun, and Ankh that are part of a trilogy of games sure. that are share area control and fun epic monsters and and designers, artists, and company. That's what they share effectively. Uh, Rising Sun is one you haven't played yet. Have you played Rising Sun? I did. How would you feel about I that I did. One? I didn't like it. Ooh, so Rising Sun for me, I enjoyed very much... But to me, it was like I enjoyed this very much. But it's basically Blood Rage without drafting. It, it and was I love more. Drafting. It was more territory control. Yeah, and I love. I love drafting. And again, Do you have it. I, I said. Of course, I have it. It's still great. We're gonna play it. We're yes. gonna play it. I'm not. I am not a territory control. Yep, I understand that. We'll I was convert you. We'll convert you. Yeah. Yes. And then okay. lastly is going to be Ankh, which should be arriving in 2021. It's a Kickstarter. Backed yep. it. Went all in, and I'm looking forward to that one again. No drafting. So I'm just looking at both these games as being my favorite style of game without my favorite thing. So, but but I, again, I like Rising Sun. I just need to play it more. It has more alliances, like actual alliances, which makes it interesting. So it does add that. Cool. Yeah. All that being said, uh, thank you. This is, I believe, your first video this on either of our channels, yeah. uh, which is super exciting. So if you enjoyed having Shira here, uh, let us know. Uh, if you made it to this point, I guarantee there's going to be a few people who did. Uh, and because I am hopefully moving closer to you yep. to some degree. Uh, hopefully, we will, yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit, but also going to be making my way up here more often because we've, we kind of have connected our yep. uh, self-enclosed bubbles. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to be doing more content on each other's, each other's channels uh, and potentially, we'll just kick him off and you can... I don't even join. need to be here. Great. I'm cool with it. So, Perfect. more Games. future content on both Board Game Co. and Quackalope will be conducted by...
Shira. And Rena. Rena. That's fair. And Ricky. Rena. And Rena. And Rena and Ricky. Honestly. Shira, Rena, Ricky. It could just be a all women channel. I'm it? I'm perfectly comfortable with all three of them yes. taking over. 100%. All that being said, thank you for being here. Whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Quack.